Hi guys, welcome back to Coding World. Today in this video, we are going to see one more interesting topic, which is a garbage collector from the Java. So let's start with the, what is garbage collection? So garbage collection is a process of removing unused object from the, unused object from the heap area and making heap memory empty for allowing more objects. So as I told in our previous lectures, in a Java, we have a heap memory, okay? And in that heap memory, whenever your application starts, all the objects gets created and sit into the your heap memory. Heap memory. But it's not like, like in a C and a C++, programmer is responsible for creating the object. He will allocate the memory for his objects. If he is creating object one, First, he will create the memory. He will allocate the memory, allocate the memory, and once he uses that object, he will deallocate the memory. Get the memory. But all this will be handled by the programmer in a C and C++. But in Java, that headache has been taken by the JVM. We can collect the garbage using a finalized method and system.gc. But it will not give guarantee that all objects will be get garbage collector or even the garbage collector process itself will, will not call. Okay, It will not give guarantee that the object will be garbage collected while doing the GC. They, they have their different rules and that we are going to see in the next step. So when you run your program on JVM, objects get collected objects is created and stored into the heap area. Some of them are long live and some of them are just short live. So those short lives objects occupies memory space from the heap area. So like as I told in our application when we create the objects that test objects get sit into the our heap area. Let's call this as a heap area. In this heap area T1 will be get T1 will be get created. And when we are assigning T1 is equal to null, that means like you are removing the reference from that object. So previously it was referenced by the your application. Now when you when you set T1 to the null, that means you are removing reference from this object. Second is like you have created the objects in your heap area. So you have created this object O, which is referenced by T1. Then again, you are creating object O2 and that is referenced by the T1. So this is a test one, this is a test two, okay, in our scenario. Now you are removing reference to your first object and assigning to the second object. That means there is no reference to the your first object. So this is eligible for garbage collection same like this okay now third third scenario is like you are creating anonymous objects like you are not you are just returning that object for the temporary purpose you are not having a reference to that object so such objects also eligible to the garbage collection so how how does garbage collection works it is automatic process handled by the jvm it specifies all its standard and according to that all the objects gets garbage collector. It can scan all the heap memory and unreachable objects gets garbage collector. Okay. So that I am going to show you in next slide. Okay. Phases of garbage collection in the GC. Standard garbage collection implementation involves three steps. Okay. Three steps. That first step is like mark all referenced object what does that mean like this is your application okay this is your application and in our application you have a three threads okay each thread is creating this object all the circles are your objects so now what you will do you will start from your gc root from gc root whatever the objects are a reference to each other like gc root is a reference to this object O1. O1 is referencing to, to O2. O2 is referencing to O3. So there is a chain of reference like from 
starting root to the end objects all are reference whatever the objects are not reference those are eligible for the garbage collection okay now first we will mark all the objects which are reachable from the your gc okay and those are not reachable will be sweep and dead okay all the non reference objects get destroyed now it's look it's like scattered everywhere okay if you see that like uh, consider this array okay continuous memory location or uh, this is the pace okay now your object 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 your fourth object is is getting garbage collected and your second and third so alternative objects has been garbage collection garbage collected so your space will be like this then uh, 3 will be here and even 7 will be here so what so you are getting empty blocks now in that empty box you will not able to store the objects because if you objects can needs four byte okay but you have four bytes suppose three bytes okay three bytes you have your you have created objects and which needs a three bytes but in your memory we don't have a continuous three bytes so what we will do that in compact remaining space by arranging the object so in that case what we will do we will shift all the objects 3 7 and remaining four remaining space will be continuous so that you will put a new object into that space so this is a compact and arranging space by shifting the your objects and making a continuous empty space now this is a mark and sweep in short we call it as a mark and sweep okay now heap memory so all these objects are as i told it is stored into the heap memory but heap mem heap memory is also divided into the sub partition okay so first partition is hidden space second is as survivor space s1 s2 third one is old generation and the last one is a even param generation so that we are going to see line by line so let's start with our first hidden space whenever our application start all objects will be like let's say you are starting your application okay so whenever you start our application objects which objects gets created objects gets created and those objects stored into the your hidden area all these are the area of heap space first it will store into the hidden area now your memory is like a, your first generation garbage collection is getting called okay when your hidden hidden space is full you call the garbage collection and in that garbage collection we will use a mark and sweep over this hidden space if you have full that hidden space okay you hidden space is like suppose hidden space is 40 mb and your application created more than 40 mb objects now what will happen it will call the mark and sweep like ms ms mark and sweep will be called on the hidden space okay and in hidden space all the objects which are referenced which are connected to the gc root okay all will be moved from the hidden space to your survivor space so again survivor space we have two survivor space it will be starting it will be shift to the s0 okay and all the non reference object will be garbage collected okay this is our first cycle first cycle of the gc in first cycle of gc what happens in from the hidden space to survivor zeros it's like s0 all the objects will be moved now what will happen in the second garbage collection in second garbage collection cycle all the objects from s0 will be shifted to the s3 we using mark and sweep method okay you can use the sn x mn flag to set the size of anger generation 
now what comes under anger generation so all the hidden space and your survival space s0 s1 it comes under the anger generation okay and old and param generations this memory will be considered again will be come under old generation okay so old generation are long lived and eventually moved from the anger generation to the older generations this is called as tenure generation and contains objects that have remained in survival phase for a long time so as seen in our previous so the objects which are survived in s0 and s3 s1 will move to the old memory okay and old memory and param generation this comes under old generation okay old generation so when objects are garbage collected from collected from the old generation it is called a major garbage collection event you can set the x xms and x mx flag to set the size of the initial and maximum period of the sorry maximum size of the heap memory okay now our last last part part of the heap memory is like a permanent generation in short we call it as a param gen okay param gen so in param gens we store the string pool okay string pool this is the memory which will be garbage collected when you are running out of memory okay memory like this is the last phase like we will not usually collect the garbage objects from this location unless and until your application is running out of memory okay now fourth like which is a meta space meta space is nothing it which meta space is like introduced in a java 8 which is a replaces param generation space the implementation difference from the param gen and this space this space of the heap is automatically resized like uh, if you see that in a heap we have a string pool okay which comes under param generation okay now previously param generation was setting a limit for the minimum and maximum now that has been replaced with a meta meta space and meta space like whenever you need a more memory it will automatically increase the space okay so that's why this is the enhancement has been brought in the java 8 now we have seen that like a uh, what kind of spaces are there in a heap memory now we will see the types of a gc garbage collector there are different types of there are mainly four types of the garbage collector one is serial garbage collector in serial garbage collection this is like a your application threads and in your this is your gc thread in serial garbage collector only one thread is used to collect a garbage from all phases of memory so it is top world event where all threads run in application stop and only gc runs gc threads run okay this is a very crucial part in your application because all your application thread will be stopped and your gc thread will be running okay and it is very difficult when you have a low latency uh, like of share market where you know within a microsecond all the transaction happens and in that case if you are using a serial garbage collector using one thread that will be taking a lot of time and it will halt your application for the long time to avoid that we bring a parallel garbage collection in that multiple threads simultaneously collect the garbage okay this is the default okay this is the default implementation of the gc in jvm and which is also known as a throughput collector if you see here these are the application thread okay and this is your okay this is your blacks are the your gc thread simultaneously multiple threads work on the heap area they use the mark and sweep process and collect the garbage okay then third one is a concurrent mark and sweep so if you see that in a serial in a serial 
and parallel garbage collector you will stop all your application thread okay and you will run your only garbage collector thread so it is a very costly process because all your application stops to avoid that issue we come up with a concurrent mark and sweep in this you, your garbage collector runs your garbage collector threads runs alongside application threads okay to minimize the stop world problem so i will show in a diagram if you if you see here previously your garbage your application threads was running separately and garbage collector thread was running separately now using a, a concurrent mark and sweep what we are doing we are running our gc and our application thread simultaneously okay due to both application and gc threads running simultaneously it consumes more memory okay then last is a garbage first it is a parallel and concurrent gms concurrent mark and swap okay it works quite differently under the hood compared to the older garbage collector it divides your space into multiple similar blocks according to your heap memory and scan parallelly those blocks after mark mark phase is completed gc know which region contains most garbage objects if the user is interested in a minimal pause gc can choose to choose to evacuate only few region if user is not worried about pause times or has stated a fairly large pause goal gc might choose the more regions since g1 gc identify region with the most garbage collector performs garbage collection on the region first okay it is called a garbage first like we have uh, multiple spaces okay so we have a eden space we have a survival space and we have a old generation space in the g1 gc what happens if you have used you use multiple threads and that multiple threads divides your main main memory like a heap memory into the multiple similar block okay and multiple threads simultaneously mark and swap that memory space okay mark and swap that memory space once you like uh, in mark and swap first it will mark that space and after marking you will know that like which area has a more garbage garbage object and according to that it will select that object and first it will apply gc on that space so that's why it is called as a garbage first so this is the last last garbage collection process apart from that there are multiple small processes but these are the four major garbage collector which used in a jvm okay so this is this is it guys for the garbage collector hope you understand i am uploading this this uh, document on my java blog java blog and will attach that link in our video description please go through that okay. if you like this video please subscribe my channel and share this link with your friends thank you and happy coding